Yes, please. Good evening, everyone. This is a meeting of the Borough of Highland Mayor and Council regular meeting, Wednesday, August 18, 2021. The notice requirements provided for in the Open Public Meetings Act have been satisfied. Notice of this meeting was properly given by transmission to the Asbury Park Press and the Two River Times and by posting at the Borough of Highland Municipal Building and filing with the Borough Clerk all on January 1st, 2021. Please stand for the pledge. <laughs> I will now call roll. Council Member Martin? Here. Council Member Mazzola? Here. Council Member Melman? Here. Council President Oshevsky? Here. Mayor Brion? Here. On tonight's agenda, we have a proclamation for Ovarian Cancer Awareness Month. September 2021 to be read by Mayor Brion. Whereas ovarian cancer <clears throat> is the fifth leading cause of cancer deaths among women in the United States and causes more deaths than any other gynecological cancer. Whereas in the United States, a woman's lifetime risk of being diagnosed with ovarian cancer is about one in 78. Whereas the American Cancer Society estimates 21,750 cases of ovarian cancer were newly diagnosed in 2020, and 13,940 individuals died from the disease nationwide, including 600 new cases and 390 cases in New Jersey. Whereas the survival rate for ovarian cancer is 46.5%, and survival rates vary greatly depending on the stage of the diagnosis. Whereas the five-year survival rate for uh, ovarian cancer is over 90% of individuals diagnosed in the early st stages. Now, therefore, I, Carolyn Guillon, Mayor of the Borough of Highlands, along with the entire council, do hereby proclaim September 2021 as Ovarian Cancer Awareness Month in the Borough of Highlands, Monmouth County, New Jersey, and to hereby support the Turn the Town's Teal Awareness Campaign. The next item on the agenda. The next item on the agenda is approval of minutes. July 14, 2021 executive session minutes and the July 14, 2021 regular session minutes. Does anyone have any changes or additions? Seeing none, I'll offer them both. I'll second. Council um, Member Martin? Yes. Council Member Mazzola? Yes. Council Member Melnick? Yes. Council President Oshevsky? Yes. Mayor Briand? Yes. Motion passes. Next item on agenda is public hearing on proposed ordinances. We have one resolution which pertains to Ordinance 021-29, and that is Resolution 21-162, a resolution acknowledging receipt and review of the Land Use Board Consistency Report for Ordinance 021-29. All offered. Council Member Martin? Yes. Council Member Mazzola? Yes. Council Member Mamet? Yes. Council President Oshevsky? Yes. Mayor Brion? Yes. Motion carries to adopt. Next, we have the public hearing of 021-29, an ordinance amending section 21-65.14 of the Borough Code to address off-street parking requirements. I will open this before I do open it to the public. Is there any comment from the council? No. Then I'll open it to the public. This is ordinance 02129. Seeing uh, nobody wishing to comment, I will close this for the public. Would anyone like to offer? I'll offer it. 
I'll second. Council Member Martin? Yes. Council Member Mazzola? Yes. Council Member Melman? Yes. Council President Oshevsky? Yes. Mayor Briand? Yes. This ordinance has passed on second and final reading. Next, we have three ordinances for introduction. O the first is O2130, an ordinance amending section 2-41.2 of the Borough Code regarding recording application procedure for request for use of the community center. I'll second it. Council Member Martin? Yes. Council Member Mazzola? Yes. Council Member Malnick? Yes. Council President Oshevsky? Yes. Mayor Brion? Yes. This ordinance has passed on first reading with public hearing set for September 1st, 2021. Next, we have O21-31, an ordinance amending Chapter 4-14 of the Borough Code, code regarding short-term rentals. I have a question. Um, I spoke to Brian earlier, and my question was, I understand why this is being changed to a certain extent, but I have, I, I'd like to know, um, besides adding multi-use, why did we change the number of units? So we changed the number of units um, in paragraph four from one to two. We added not more than two units in any mixed-use building because mixed-use building was not originally included. And then we also changed paragraph four um, under C on page two from two to three. Under subsection C4, that's prohibited. So we are warning to prohibit it. So that's to make it consistent with the earlier section. If you need subsection C, okay. it says short term rental shall not be permitted. Yes. And it says three or mm -hmm. more units. So yes, that was up because the, uh, the approval to the allowance was for two rental two. units in a mixed use building and two in the multi family residential dwelling. Okay, and so we want okay, this was done with the comfortable plan. Okay, so we want for consistency. Consistency over yes. all, all of okay. the types. Okay, fine. Thank you so much. Let me ask a question about that too. In the three or more units that are that are uh, prohibited, uh, the two to three, in that circumstance, uh, the owner is not a resident. Correct is not occupied by the owner nor legally identified by the owner as his or her personal residence. So that's completely different. Correct. None of the above that we allow can be in a unit in which. Yeah. The owner is not on site somewhere. The, the, not, the, the actual code section, which is very extensive, it's on amendment two, yes. does generally require that all provisions still re are required, but for instance, in a mixed use building, it does not require the owner occupied this. You necessarily have an owner occupied in a mixed use building. Okay. And as I, may I continue? As I read further, I uh, got out the code book to learn more about this because I wasn't sure what short term meant and whatever. I was interested in the fact that the person who does have a short term rental to, to offer must provide the name of the renter, the short term yes. renter. To the, to the the specific requirements yeah. for licensing that are still all applicable except um, for certain provisions. So as I said, this was originally adopted, I believe, back in uh, 2018 mm -hmm. and I dealt with the Airbnb issue. Yes. And also that the owner must be on site 24 hours, seven days a week. Is that possible to, to ask? It, it depends upon what the code section is. That's what it's in there, yeah. But that's not being changed by this ordinance. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions? Oh, no, thank you. <clears throat> and with that, then I'll offer it. I'll second. Council Member Martin? Yes. Council Member Mazzola? Yes. Council Member Melman? Yes. Council President Oshevsky? Yes. Mayor Brion? Yes. 
This ordinance has passed on first reading with public hearing set for September 1st, 2021. The next ordinance is 021-32, an ordinance amending Chapter 7-3.8 of the Borough Code regarding permit parking for residents. And this is the one that has been back and forth at this table for quite some time. We have believe all of us have uh, spoken with uh, residents as well as the Chief of Police multiple occasions uh, regarding what streets, why, uh, where, when, and how. Uh, I don't believe there's any other questions, but if they are, Please let me know. We're all good. Mm -hmm. Okay, seeing we're all good, I'll offer it. I'll second. Councilmember Martin? Yes. Councilmember Mazzola? Yes. Councilmember Melman? Mm -hmm. Yes. Council President Oshevsky? Yes. Mayor Brion? Yes. This ordinance has passed in first reading with public hearing set for September 1st, 2021. Next item on agenda is resolution. The first is R21163, a resolution authorizing attainment of bills. I will offer it. I'll second. Council Member Martin? Yes. Council Member Mazzola? Yes. Council Member Melman? Yes. Council President Oshevsky? Yes. Mayor Brion? Yes. Motion carries to adopt. Next, we have R21164, a resolution appointing Superintendent of Public Works, Recycling Coordinator, and Clean Communities Coordinator. I will offer that. I'll second. Council Member Martin? Yes. Council Member Mazzola? Yes. Council Member Melman? Yes. Council President Oshevsky? Yes. Mayor Brion? Yes. Motion carries to adopt. Next, we have R21165, a resolution authorizing the refund of a bulk permit. I'll offer it. I'll second. Council Member Martin? Yes. Council Member Mazzola? Yes. Council Member Melman? Yes. Council President Oshevsky? Yes. Mayor Brion? Yes. Motion passed with us. Next we have R21166, a resolution authorizing the refund of a CO application fee. I'll offer it. Second. Council Member Martin? Yes. Council Member Mazzola? Yes. Council Member Melman? Yes. Council President Oshevsky? Yes. Mayor Brion? Yes. Motion carries to adopt. Next, we have R21167, a resolution authorizing execution of deposit agreement with Monmouth County Archives. I will offer this. I'll second. Council Member Martin? Yes. Council Member Mazzola? Yes. Council Member Melman? Yes. Council President Oshevsky? Yes. Mayor Brion? Yes. Motion to <coughs> Next, we have R21168, a resolution approving renewal of liquor license for 2019-2020 for license number 1317-33-016-004, the Lyft Enterprise Bank. I'll offer it. I'll second. <coughs> Council Member Martin? Yes. Council Member Mazzola? Yes. Council Member Melman? Yes. Council President Oshevsky? Yes. Mayor Brion? Yes. Motion carries to adopt. Next, we have R21169, a resolution approving renewal of liquor license for 2021-2022 for license number 1317-33-016-004 for Lift Enterprises Inc. I'll offer. I'll second. Council Member Martin? Yes. Council Member Mazzola? Yes. Council Member Melman? Yes. Council President Oshevsky? Yes. Mayor Brion? Yes. Motion carries to adopt. The last resolution we have tonight is R21170, a resolution authorizing the Borough of Highlands to submit an application to the New Jersey Department of Community Affairs for the Neighborhood Preservation Program. I'll offer. I'll second. Council Member Martin? Yes. Council Member Mazzola? I have a couple of questions. I'm very excited about this grant application, actually, and I'm very hopeful that we get this, um, especially in consideration of us pursuing our central business district as an area of redevelopment. Um, with that being said, I have a few questions. I understand that the, the grant awards the borough an additional $25,000 per year for administrative expenses. 
are we considering using these funds to, en to engage in a consultant who can work alongside our planner and other professionals in a cohesive manner in consideration of our area of, of redevelopment? Um, and since the grant requires a stakeholder team um, as part of the uh, process and our economic development committee will not be accepted by the DCA as this type of team. They want a fresh start team for this purpose. Who will make up the team? Have we given that any thought yet? Um, and who, what will the process be in order to place those people who might be interested in, in becoming a part of our team? Now the team needs to be a group of local stakeholders, which would be residents, business owners, and property owners as such. And how can people apply if we are awarded the grant? This might be pre premature, but I wanted to get it out there now, and maybe we can start discussing it. Um, how can people apply, and who will make this decision? Mike, you want to take that? All right. Um, as of right now, there was, and I don't have the, the application in front of me, there were um, some names of, of some residents that were put on there for purposes of the application. Um, I was put down as the, the person that would be in charge of it. Um, I guess it's something, since there is 25,000 that is earmarked for, for a person to administer the grant, I guess that's something that could be decided provided we get the grant and, and later on for that if we want to go in that direction with somebody else. So as of right now, there were, there were just random names that were put on the application, Mike? Yes, and I unfortunately don't have it in front of me right now. Okay. Um, I would really hope that that's something that, one, we could change if we are awarded the grant because um, I, I think that it's very important because we are really gaining an opportunity here, perhaps for the, for the area of redevelopment, that we can really come up with a, an equitable situation so that we have people from a lot of different groups that are involved in the area that can weigh in uh, with the situation. Instead of just hand picking, I mean, that's not really fair either, right? To, to figure sure. out like, who we're going to hand pick. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that that's something, and I hope that that's something that we could work out later if, sure. we're, if we're awarded the grant. Sure, um, absolutely. I, I just wanted to also to explain to everyone here that, because we didn't really explain the grant right to the, to the public right now, um, it's a program that's designed for district revitalization and to raise economic, social, and overall value to the district. Uh, it's, to it's supposed to take the district and elevate it so, so the value is increased overall. Um, and it's to raise a local economy by improving the tangible. So the money, the grant money should be used on things that we can see, feel and touch, so to speak. Five year program, uh, $125,000 per year and it requires a 20% match from the borough, which is $25,000. So, I'm really hoping that we get the grant. <laughs> May I ask a question? Sure. Um, when, I, when I learned about it, am I right that um, different people who may live or have businesses in the area can apply to that grant for for uh, one of the things? Yeah. So there's a it's a many faceted uh, grant process. One of the things is uh, individual grants to either residents or business owners for improvements to their uh, properties that are in the district, and this is the same district as the central business district. So it's a good mix of both uh, residents and businesses, and part of that is direct grants to these folks, say for new doors, new windows, um, a new paint job or siding. Uh, if they no longer like their chain link fence, they can get a wrought iron fence, or there's all different things. It's a whole application process that's guided by the TCA. Uh, so we're not just making this up on our own. In fact, we, we, did, we won this exact grant. It was a lower dollar amount then, but we won it uh, 20 years ago. 
Um, and we did a lot of the uh, facade, facade improvements then, but again, it's not just facades. It could be windows or doors or any of those other things that I mentioned to uh, help beautify spruce it up. There's a section in here for a community art project, so we could also have public murals be a part of this program. There's a lot of different facets. One thing I spoke with um, the president of the Historical Society, which is somebody that I wanted to have, I thought would be a, a good fit. I looked at other MPP programs, and they had you know, mayor and, and a member of council, and then they had a person from the land use board, they had a person from uh, the Historical Society, or one of the other clubs, the Lions Club, or something like that. Residents, businesses, a whole different mix of people that are, that are on the strip or near the strip, or that belong to one of those societies in that mix. Um, what else was there was public arts. They're sprucing up gardens as a section that you can do for shrubs and trees along the strip, which as many people know we struggle with that. It's something that Don's taking up at Shade Tree about what we can get in our, our tree stuff that's not just decimated by uh, uh, mean high floods. So uh, we're looking at uh, more drought, both drought resistant and salt resistant things that we can grow here in the borough. If we can have this grant pay for it, Instead of us having to pay for it out of taxpayer dollars, all the matter. So uh, this is something I, I took a lot of, uh, I think, three uh, different webinars since the beginning of the year on to uh, just educate myself on the process. And then uh, now we're here at the time to uh, go out for it. And if we get it, we're going to have a lot more information that's going to come out to everyone. And, uh, and see about some engagement to get some people in there who uh, would like to participate. And also, I, I was very impressed with DCA when they said that they are, they are very highly involved. Mm -hmm. um, they need to approve the team. Um, no, and we also have to have, you know, a whole proposal for them, you know, if we're awarded a grant, which they have to sign off on, and, and so on and so forth. And they're also very, um, keen to help us if we do get the grant. And to be proactive to yeah. help us. Yes, yeah. technical results. assistance and, and whatnot that we may need. So we have a second, so roll call. I started the roll call. Okay. Um, oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Council Mr. Norman? Yes. Council President Oshevsky? Yes. Mayor Brion? Yes. Motion <laughs> carries to adopt. Oh, yes, oh, that's right. I understand. Yeah. Right. Motion carries to adopt. There is one item under other business, and that is to just, in case you haven't seen it, the public notice that we are going to have a special meeting on Monday at 6 o'clock right here, and that's going to be a discussion of the redevelopment process. And uh, there was some confusion at the last land use board meeting. A lot of people didn't understand the process. They didn't understand that the law uh, changed uh, back in the early teens, I want to say it was 2012 to 2014, that allowed an area of redevelopment without condemnation, meaning that there is no eminent domain. Uh, so we're going to have the planner and the uh, land use, not the land use attorney, the, um, the development attorney, uh, come by and see if people still have questions, but we're prepared to answer all of your uh, legal questions and planning questions and hope that everyone understands the process now. Uh, we're also going to send out a next one, probably tomorrow, and then another one over the weekend just to remind everybody what's going on. Uh, we'll also pick up social media with the, uh, with the post that uh, Jackie put out earlier. And uh, just keep it on top of everyone's mind that uh, it's here, it's a resource. If you have questions, come out and let the professionals uh, explain the process. I don't think that anybody wants to ask that. No? Then uh, we have the administrative report. Uh, yes, a um, couple of things I wanted to point out. Um, the mayor uh, and I attended the uh, ceremony at Twin Light for the stamp dedication. It was. Uh, it was really good. It was really, uh, really nice, really interesting. Um, I've had multiple meetings with FEMA trying to get um, reimbursement for tropical storm Isais. We're looking at about a thirty-seven thousand dollar payment from FEMA for that. And there's just a few odds and ends we have to tie up for that. So um, yesterday, I actually attended a shared services meeting with the county and uh, most of the other municipalities. Um, so it looks like the county really wants to push uh, sharing 
a lot of the services with them that they can do uh, more cost effectively, especially for the smaller municipalities. Um, uh, met with the risk manager. All of our insurance policies should be up to date, and everything should be squared away with that now. The uh, the the Dodge Charger that the county gave to us is in service now with uh, with the first date, and we should start receiving the new parks equipment tomorrow for the playgrounds. Excellent. Time for tomorrow for receipt. Do we have a tentative date as to when the installation will start? I don't have it. Um, I will talk to uh, the public works and see what we can we can do. We have to do a lot of prep work for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just want to make sure we'll there. And then the parks are going to be under construction. So the yeah, I stop the heat. Right. No problem. And I have a question. Once we do start, and Mike, you probably won't know this. Maybe you can get back to us. Once we do start replacing the equipment, how long will the parks be down? And will we be doing them simultaneously or consecutively? We'll probably do them as we come in. There's been a lot of, uh, you know, from what I understand, disruption in like supply chains yes. for different equipment. So as we get stuff in, we'll do the prep work for whatever part that, that entails so we can get that done and, and put in use as quickly as possible. But I'll try and get a timeline for everybody. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I want to go over a few of the projects that we are working on. Uh, the improvements to Locust Street, uh, that project is done. We're working on a final closeout for reimbursement from the, the uh, NJDOT. Uh, the Phase one uh, sanitary sewer project uh, was submitted to DEP uh, or the I Bank, um, and we're we're awaiting their authorization to go out to bid. Um, we've had uh, discussions with them, and they're they're still reviewing the plans and, and uh, things on their end. Uh, but we are continuing to follow up. Uh, and then the other uh, project is improvements to King and Matthew Street. Uh, that's utilizing the uh, borough's 2021 uh, NJPOT grant. Um, the uh, survey is wrapping up on, on those roads, and we are advancing the construction plans. And I'd be happy to answer any other questions that the council has. Back to the IBank, there was something that we had discussed earlier, um, well, maybe not discussed, I put something out on the PCC to the council mm -hmm. about. Um, Taking a look at the money from the I Bank and then the money from the um, from the federal government that they gave us from COVID funds, and then having a look at either uh, more grants, more bonds, some of our own uh, money that we already uh, have in our budget, and just get all of those streets listed done. Because the longer we wait, the longer it's going to cost. And if we just plan to get all of those streets that are listed on that project done, we might get some economies of scale from it getting done together, and then, uh, as I said, also try to reach out to other types of funding that we can get for this project. I've been told, but I don't, you know, things get told from Washington, but a lot of things don't happen, but there's supposedly another round of funding that's headed our way that's uh, strictly for um, sanitary sewer and internet and just how have, have this, this funding was put in place once it was the two hundred and roughly two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So if we get another two hundred and fifty thousand dollars and just keep on getting more streets in there, at least have them build out there. As one project with a lot of add-ons or one big project, maybe we can cut away at it more so sooner rather than later when we all know everything's going to be more fast. Yeah. yeah, I think that's a, a good idea. Uh, and um, be happy to work with, with the governing body and, and with your administrator to uh, make sure we can award as much as possible and utilize whatever money you have. Yes, thank you. I think everyone's on board with this idea. That's yeah. great. Does anyone else have any questions from the engineer regarding current projects? Okay. 
Okay, I'm going to open up to the public. Anyone have a comment they'd like to make? You can, well, I don't know what happens when I make a comment. <laughs> but if you can make your way over to the podium, that would be great. Mayor Council, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Earl Lee. I live at both trade and and I was hoping that the council would provide an update on the progress on the K through 12 initiatives going on between the Atlantic Highlands, Highlands, and Seabright. Uh, I've been attending the council meetings in the Atlantic Highlands to get updates on that, as well as in our town, Seabright. And I'm encouraged by the progress, but I was hoping we get a directly from the government body here on how it's going uh, and the concerns you have. And I think it looks like it's moving towards the referendum potentially next year. Not this year, but I was hoping to get an update from you. Thank you. Um, we have no update as of yet. Uh, we understand that Seabright did a, a resolution uh, looking to ask for the commissioner to do uh, to put that on for referendum. Uh, the governor still has not signed the bill yet, which is troubling. Uh, so we're pretty much in, in a holding pattern until that happens. The uh, date for, and I don't have the exact date, the middle of August next year will be the deadline for all of the boroughs to get together their wording to get onto the ballot in November. So we've got a little bit over a year to, to get this whole sort of together. Can I follow up on that? Sure. So um, I understand everything you said. Thank you for that. Uh, my understanding is that the government does not sign it as far as it becomes law. Um, I think the legislative vote was 72 to nothing mm -hmm. on my part in that which time means everybody's leading in that direction. And I guess the thing I was just hoping to understand is just sort of the country here in the Highlands, the development of this is going to come in for referendum to the voters. And I don't know if you've met and made any decisions on how you can proceed on your drafting the resolutions necessary to make progress here. Because the last thing we want to have happen is the clock continues to run and then we miss another deadline. So I don't know if you have anything to add on that. But, uh, I do not. We are not doing anything right now. Okay. Are you in the coordination of the members of the other town? Yes, I am. Okay. Thank you very much. And that's the last comment. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone else have a uh, question or comment? Hi, Tina Kemmer, 164 Lincoln Avenue. Um, I have a couple questions. Well, first of all, um, with regard to the Highlands uh, at the White House, it's really a shame that the stance is an Aberstick. So it's got a picture of our White House, but it's just an Aberstick. Is that because it's owned? I mean, is it technically on the uh, property? Of, it's not on our property, evidently. Because it, it, it would have been great PR plus, obviously. I'm not exactly sure uh, of the reason for that. I know that there was a, uh, every time somebody brought up or brought up the word Navasink, it there was a groan from the crowd. Um, but I'm not exactly sure. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah. It's a pity because it would have been just a, a great, you know, a, a great thing for us. Uh, okay. Uh, also, I wanted to follow up to see if the malware problem has mm -hmm. been fixed. Um, there was a malicious uh, masquerade around email uh, with the uh, public officials here in town, and I unfortunately got stuck on the like, peak squad and have them. Yeah. How does this happen, and will this happen again? Uh, it shouldn't. It, uh, you can never say never. Um, we we had our IT company. Uh, everyone had changed all their emails. I think what they think happened was that is somebody may have clicked on a piece of malware. Um, but we we had everything cleaned out. We purchased um, it's supposed to be you know a great filtering program that's not supposed to happen again. Um, but it was very clever. Yeah. Very very clever because it really mimicked. It did. You know, replying and so forth. So uh, as long as there's an action taken, yeah. I don't know. If it, I mean, is the website clean? Yeah. So, it, 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 I have a name from the website though. This is some email yes. service. Yeah. So, I, I, I just I, want to make sure. I, 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 I do too. This one. Yeah. I have a question too. Mike, we, from my from the business that I work with. 
Um, I, I handle, I coordinate a lot with the IT, um, my IT group as well. And we actually, um, we actually plan, we don't tell a staff, um, kind of like drills. We'll send something out that, that has a uh, potentially malicious link um, to really to test their savviness and to see if they're going to click on something on that. And then based on what occurs, obviously it's not a real malicious uh, situation, but based on what occurs, we, we will then take the opportunity to educate people and, and, and talk about and train them and, and that kind of thing. And it's, I'm, I'm kind of want, hoping and wondering if that's something that we might consider. Because yeah. you know, somebody like me and probably several others who are sitting here are very well aware of what the situation is, but not yeah. not everybody is that educated. That was one of the things that we discussed about they're going to send out those, those type of phishing emails just to get a gauge on who's clicking on it and who's not. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. If I could just add quickly, because I didn't want to spend too much time on that, but there was actually a reply, and it was coming from a legitimate email, yeah. and it was really kind of like a non-descript reply. It was like, well, here's the information you'd like, right? And so it's probably not from anyone of you being able to ferret out, you know, uh, you know, stuff that's been happening because it was really the person on the receiving end that really kind of became not knowing. And honestly, I mean, I've seen a lot of crazy stuff out there, and I don't know. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we'll very slick. No, but Tina it originated from someone, with some, you know, the user community, the user community, which is very, very, which is quite large, and that's what happens. Okay. And uh, just lastly, can someone, uh, can maybe you can tell me um, what the uh, uh, rules, restrictions, and so forth on, on fireworks neighborhoods? We have issues where I can put fireworks all over the town. And uh, is there a ban on fireworks when around people will see their property and so forth? And, you know? Well, I guess it depends on the fireworks. So there are some that are legal. It's either like like I maybe mean, like bombs that are off, things like that. I think that's something. No, but there's two different stuff. You know, I don't know what the difference is. I mean, I guess maybe except for buying CVS and what have you. But um, chief, if they're going into other people's properties, there is there. Those are legal fireworks. The legal fireworks are called ground fireworks. So the ones that go in the air will they pop and they pop those and go in the air. So if you hear those, it's just cool. Around the street, it's okay. Around the street, they're okay for people to go or something like that. They shouldn't let them off the street. But if they're on their own property, uh, okay. the ground fireworks, they want to leave them down to do it. So if you're in my bank or you see them in the sky, it's cool. Thank you. Um, I'm here for my monthly check in on the raccoon issue. So, um, so maybe everyone, I just want to thank you. I know you haven't been in touch, um, but it's been a while. So, I just wanted to find out um, if I think that the tracking you've been doing has been somewhat helpful. But I've been hearing from neighbors in this area that there's still issues. And um, I understand there's also some big discussion on Facebook from other members of the town about they're having issues with it in different parts of it. The town besides um, weather. So, I just wanted to follow up and find out if um, this is going to be continuous thing because it's obviously a, a big problem that we think is recurring. And also to see if there's any kind of thought about a permanent plan that could be in place. Maybe do this, I don't know, quarterly or what have you, because we know that this is sort of the big season to move in, then they hibernate, then they come back and spring with new families. So, I'm happy to. Work with anybody to see what we can do to make this go away, but I just wanted to just follow up and, and see if there's any progress in the that show. Okay, well, first off, I will say that we don't discuss comments that are made on Facebook here. No, Facebook I'm, comments, just, I'm just saying, Facebook comments mean nothing okay. to us here. Okay? Well, all right, let me, I'm just thinking one by one. I wrote them down with that. Uh, also, uh, we caught those two gigantic raccoons. I think they each were. 20 pounds. Each, one of them was pregnant, mm -hmm. so that was a big yeah, thumbs up there. We're going to continue to track at least until the end of this month. Right. Um, also, uh, all of the TNR folks that are in the area are being notified that they need to uh, track new their release for the feral cats. There can be no food left out after dark. It's in our borough ordinance. They've been told a lot. 
Uh, but I don't feel, in my opinion, in my opinion, I don't feel that it's our colony managers that are the issue. Or I think it's other folks that are not part of the colonies that are feeding people at better feeding people. God help me. Um, after dark, yeah. and uh, there's been reports that we can't catch this one guy who just runs around with one of those big 22 uh, pound bags of Christmas on his shoulder and lets it dribble out, you know, on the street. But uh, it's people like that that are causing this issue. Yeah. As long as there is an environment in which there is there are food left strewn everywhere, we're going to have the problem. We are still going to have the problem because we live next to a forest. But it exacerbates the problem when folks think they're doing the right thing by feeding these cats without feeding the cats. Mm -hmm. They're feeding everything else. Yep. I totally agree. And so we, we, we put something out to them, and it's, sometimes what happens is folks that are uh, colony managers, they know other, I'll say, sympathetic folk in town that uh, do this other feeding that's not, they're not in a colony, and word of mouth gets around. And it's, it's, you know, ridiculous to think I'm going to have our police officers running around trying to find someone feeding a cat. I know. It's dark. Um, I know. I, I really have to be basically because we're against animals. Well, you're not yeah. against yeah. animals. Yeah. It's not that yeah. you're against animals at all. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, 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 it's the, 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 you know. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so the folks that are, that are making it enticing for these animals to be in your backyard, that's where it really messes up. So like I said, we're going to trap as many as we can, and they get relocated far, far away. Um, and uh, like I said, we're going to, I personally am going to speak to all the colony managers and tell them to be on the lookout for other folks in the area that are feeding what they shouldn't be. That's great. And, um, and then I guess can we also look forward to next year to come up with a plan to to get this up before it gets started again, like to get trapping in place, or I'm not sure how where the trapping is coming from and how that's going to take care of it. I think that this, this is a, a, a more um, serious problem, it's not a seasonal thing. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Mr. Michelle. Uh, it's something that we can, I don't know exactly when they come out of hibernation, I'm assuming sometime in March maybe, but it's something that we could do going forward. Um, um, we, we can only put traps on borough property also. Um, so if anybody on their own property ha has a problem, if they're not rabid, if you just have like a, a raccoon collar, you would have to take care of that yourself by by getting a cut of like, like a trapper, basically, to have them relocated. Okay. If they look, you know, like they're acting strange or they're rabid or something like that, then you can call animal control. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. And, um, Don, I may have missed your report. You didn't, but I'll be on the record by saying Slattery is absolutely a supporter of animals. It's been a very, very, very helpful uh, crafting a campaign for our uh, our efforts to have more responsible dog ownership and for picking up after their own dogs and, and also bringing it back to their own receptacles so that they're not dumping another folks' trash. So I think we've uh, been working on striking the right tone because, of course, like, we all love dogs, or most of us do. Uh, but, uh, but certainly want to make sure that this, this campaign itself isn't putting, you know, one person against another. It's right. absolutely looking to be more constructive and engaging folks at that level where it's just be pitching in for your entire neighborhood. So thank you so much for signing for that. You're very welcome and I'm available wherever you need to help you. I can see you all reach out. Thank you. I am Susan Bunner from Free Central, and I just have a follow-up question, because I thought residents weren't allowed to trap on their property, so I feel like I've gotten conflicting information. No, not so much trap, but if, if you have like a, a like a colony of raccoons that are living on your property, I think that you have to call a, like a pest control service to get them relocated. Um, but we're allowed to do that. On your own property. You can't personally do it. You can, yeah. You have a pest control okay. service. Okay. okay, that wasn't, I didn't really understand. Okay, great. And I just have one other question. Um, does the town have any plans to plant trees on the parking lot where the old town hall used to be? I feel like, you know, given the global warming stuff and the lack of tree cover in the lower part of town, it would be really nice. And I think it would improve the the townscape in that spot if we planted trees there. And I was just wondering if there was a discussion about it, it was decided not to do it. We're, we're constantly looking for new opportunities to plant trees. And first and foremost, you know, we've lost a lot of trees along the way, and so we're working 
with our new uh, our head of DPW in order to get that rectified, making sure that what we do plant is going to be surviving and not just you know watering for people or it's not a tree and then it dies again. Um, but I don't think specifically we've looked at that parking lot, but I don't think that there's any harm in you know, continuing to look at the more and more places. Well, well, you can have almost like an LA of trees down the middle where that uh, island is. I think it's really I'll, I'll bring it up with the Tree Commission next with our next yeah. month meeting. So to let you know, it was part of the original plan. Yeah, it's just being yeah. done. Um, it's still part of the uh, the grant for. Uh, we'll even look at the grant, but uh, we're going to see if we get the grant first, so that we get their money to pay for it. Um, is to um, put trees not just through that alley. We can't clog that up because that's where the drainage um, mm -hmm. pipes are. So you don't want the trees to get yeah. into the drainage, but also over to the sides as well, and even some you know just streetscaping, even if there's shrubs. Um, so shrubs and trees were all over it. It's um, what we're working with on it with at the Shade Tree Commission, and that's part of uh, what we're looking to do in, uh, in one of the sessions. Yeah. I think at the time when we were um, planning the parking lot and, and the, the whole landscape on it, I think that we were talking about some type of ornamental grasses that could be put into place in those rocky areas. At the time, and that might, I'm wondering if that's something that we might want to look into because they're, they're beach type grasses that yeah. do love. Maybe both, you know, like yeah. There's no reason not to have a lot of space. I see no Can I say something? Sure. I just wanted to add, see if I want to see if Portland and Abby, I just wanted to add to Rosemary's uh, discussion about the TNR. Um, I would hope that, uh, I think it's great with the, the dog, you know, issue, but um, I, I think it would be great if we had more of a sustained education effort in town, because I think it's a, a town-wide issue, at least the feral cat situation. Um, in my neighborhood, on Linden Avenue, we have a lot of feral cats, and the owner, well, owner, she's not the owner, but the house that kind of feeds the cats, they're so afraid that they're going to get in trouble if they um, interact with the MCSPCA, MCSPCA. And um, even though I've told them, you know, they're going to help you, they can give you food, they can tell you how, how to manage a, a cat colony and so on, um, they're still afraid. So it seems to me that there is an educational process that needs to be uh, ongoing and sustained. And uh, a lot of the uh, cat colony folks, the very, very uh, knowledgeable folks, they really know a lot. They really lend uh, uh, a helping hand, you know, give guidance and kind of follow their fears because this has already been ongoing from my mm -hmm. standpoint in our complex for a few years. And um, I know that the SBC had come in and said traps because I was having cats spray and defecate everywhere on our property. And, um, Unfortunately, it ended up catching uh, uh, Sophie's cat that was chipped who let their cat out all the time. They turned into a big debacle. The guy went nuts and thought I was kidnapping this cat and all this crazy stuff. So clearly, it's an educational process. So I really stand 100% behind it, but I think we just need to, you know, rather than every April when kind of all the cat colony folks get together and talk about how they're managing things, it, it makes me roll it out to everybody because I think you know, the guy with the, the, the first tea bag, there's probably tons of people in town that are doing the same thing. And they're just not understanding how that's hurting the community and how they want to keep cats. There's a main way to do it. And also, we have a couple of years up and down the that. So I don't know how that's happened, but it's. We live next to a forest. So we live next to a forest. Yeah. That's how it happened. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, and we'll have anything else to add to Joanne or something to my yeah, dad? I, I want to make a comment. Oh, I'm going to close the portion. Oh, I don't know, maybe about six, eight weeks ago, um, we had a complaint from someone because of all the glass that was all over this beach. And so um, I was around and I went to the beach and I, put my, I brought in my a bushel of glass. Uh, I came today and walked all over this beach. This uh, it will years to end. Yeah. Because first of all, the beach looks beautiful. I couldn't find it. I found a bottle top only because 
there's a pile of, I guess it's going to be taken away. Yes. It's just gravel and whatever. And there was like this much at the top of the glass bottle. But the beach looks gorgeous. And what a difference. So that was a, I went that got put together. Mm -hmm. It's good. Absolutely. Anyone else? Does anyone want to add? Will we close? Okay. I motion to adjourn. Is there a all in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> <laughs>